Hey everyone and welcome to this week's Mondays with Madison. I am super excited to have Mary Icopo, former Texas softball player and now professional softball player joining us and we're just going to talk about her softball career and a little bit about life beyond so stay tuned. <laughs> Mary, before we start, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm from Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm 23. I recently graduated UT fall of 21, and I'm currently playing for the Smash It Sports Vipers out of Rochester, New York. Um, so straight after season uh, of college season, I went straight to the pros, and it's been a whirlwind of emotions, but... I'm so excited to be here. So happy to have you. So as a fellow California girl, um, you first started at Oregon. So what was the draw to go up north from California? It was more of a gut feeling of the people I was going to be surrounded with. Um, My coaches, I built a really good relationship with them, all three of them, my head and both assistants. And really met some of my lifelong friends um, traveling up north. So it was an easy decision off the bat. And for a high schooler, I don't think I made the mistake of having indecisiveness. So I was really confident in the decision to go play for Oregon um, after I graduated. That's awesome. Coming out of high school, that is such a whirlwind decision, especially making it as like a 16, 17, 18 year old. So That's great. After Oregon, you decided to transfer to Texas. So what went into that decision to leave Oregon? There was a coaching change after my freshman year. I had the best freshman year I could have possibly asked for in terms of relationships and meeting new people and just figuring out life um, as a young adult. And we gave, I gave the new coach a chance and tried to get to know her and the new staff as best as I could. And I didn't believe that I was going to grow as much as I did in that one year that I had in college. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to make the best decision for myself and look, look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, Going through that transfer process and being recruited all over again um, was really stressful. It was, you didn't have four years to make a decision you had two months months yeah um just priorities and what you wanted and I wanted to really emphasize getting a great education um and also being taken care of outside of uh the athlete side Mm -hmm. Um, medically obviously educationally and just being able to experience something new I wasn't afraid of going out of state again um right because I knew I would grow even more as a person being mm-hmm. away from home and um, having that forced responsibility to take care of mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah, definitely coming out of state, like me being from California as well, that's definitely something you're forced to do early is grow up a little sooner just because you're not as close to home. But that's awesome that you made that decision for what was best for yourself. When you first got to Texas, your sophomore season, you had a great year leading your team in home runs and RBIs right off the bat. So what was that first season like as a Longhorn? Usually people say there's a sophomore slump. So I had a decent freshman year and you're supposed to do way worse than you did that year. Mm -hmm. Um, But it felt like a freshman year all over again. I was in a new environment. I had a new team. So it just felt like a new beginning and surrounded by really good people that accepted us from the jump was pretty amazing. And I couldn't have asked for a better first year. I won't lie and say it was amazing and had butterflies and rainbows (laughs) everywhere. Um, It was hard and not a a lot of people supported our decision um, because there are four of us that left and went to Texas, but um, our teammates were the most accepting and it was the best part of it. Yeah. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Exactly. 
So junior year, you had a shortened season due to COVID and you decided to end up staying your fifth year. So was COVID something that went in that decision or what made that decision possible? So I always told myself I was going to hang up my cleats after four years of college um, and just enter the real world after that. Mm -hmm. Um, and when something's taken away from you, um, on such short notice and you take life for granted a little bit, I think you appreciate the sport a little more. And so yeah, totally. I appreciated the run that we had in that 2020 season and knew once it was taken away that I wanted to play a fifth year. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was the best run we have ever had. We ranked top three. And I just wanted that feeling one more time. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I decided to say my fifth year too. So that decision, it's just, why not? Like, why not stay another year with all your best friends and just get to do it one more time? So the part that I have been dying to talk to you about is this past season, your team had the motto of one more and it seems like it clearly paid off with your national championship run and making it to the national championship game against OU. So tell me about that feeling and just what this season has meant to you. This season was hard. Um, it was filled with lots of emotions, lots of highs, lots of lows. Um, because in the beginning of the season, a lot of people forget, but we were not good. <laughs> we out and we didn't play well together. Um, we traveled to Florida for our first two opening weekends and had a tied record of six and six at the end of it. Mm. Um, actually, I think we had a losing record. It was like four and six, actually. Sorry. And so it was really hard to start at the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, like thinking about our 2020 season, we were on the top. We were at the top of after our preseason and conference was about to start and it got taken away from us. Right. So I assumed, which was like the huge mistake of <laughs> we were going to be great. We mm -hmm. had a really amazing transfer pitcher come in and we had a strong senior class. And I just assumed that everything was going to be amazing. It was going to be 2020 all over again. And I was mistaken. And so it was, how do we put the team first? How do we motivate each other to do one more um, without it getting catty, without um, extra emotions involved? Right. So uh, like your teammates can see that you have their best interest and everyone has the team's best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. And so figuring that out um, during conference, we just started to get on a roll and we hit a lot of bumps in the road and comes election show, we were unseated and it felt like a slap in the face, but due to our inconsistencies throughout the season, it made sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just either going to roll with it or you're going to lie down and go to someone else's house and let them just kick you out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the opposite of what our senior class wanted to do. We saw we were going to Washington and for three of us, that felt like home. Um, two of our team, two of our seniors are from the Pacific Northwest and me being that I've played in the Pac-12 before, it right. felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we got on the same page during postseason and just kind of leaned on each other. Mm -hmm. We allowed for mistakes to happen and allowed for a bend, but never a break. And it was really awesome just to look back and see all the amazing things that we did. Um, and we knew once we got to the World Series, we would face um, two of the other Big 12 teams in it. Mm -hmm. And we just felt confident that we could hang with them, but also because we had beat the number one team before, we belonged there. Right. Being the first unseated team to make it to the national championship, it just meant a lot from where we started four years years ago when I transferred in totally. so it just all made sense and I just felt that it was meant to be mm -hmm. um we were meant to be in that game um no matter what anybody had said yeah you and, were. <laughs> um, 
making that choice of playing my fifth year after um, COVID being such an unknown factor after 2020, it just, it all made sense after. Mm -hmm. That's truly an underdog story for sure. And as an athlete, athlete myself, the national championship game is truly just something that everyone dreams of. But in addition to that dream that everyone has, there was such an increase in viewership and exposure this College World Series. So what does that mean to you knowing that softball is getting the exposure that it deserves and especially you guys being the ones on that stage getting that exposure? It means so much to the game and to those who had played before us. Um, When we had found out we, when our fan base had found out we made it to the national championship game our alumni all jumped on a plane and came and sat front row with us and supported us and so to know that they were the foundation that started this for us um it just means a lot that the game is continuing to grow and that people love softball and if you've never watched it before and you turned it on you're gonna fall in love with it because of how fast it is how competitive it is Mm -hmm. and just the dynamics of baseball and softball are the same, but different all at the same time. Agreed. So it's it's truly amazing to see that the game is just continuing to grow every day. Mm -hmm. It was so fun to watch that for sure. And just seeing even the fan content on social media, everyone was talking about softball and the college world series and Texas softball. And it was so great to see. After that championship game, three days after, like you said, it was a whirlwind. You were drafted by a professional team, the Vipers. So tell me about that experience and how it's been so far. So we had landed after we lost the second game. We flew out the next day and we we got in at two. I got a phone call from my manager at like five. I'm sitting at dinner and she says, are you ready to hop on a plane? Um, to go head to Florida no way and I flew out two days after we had landed and so had a total of three days to pack up everything and just figure it out yeah by Austin real quick yes and so I was obviously stressed I have a dog and it's like do I take my dog do I not my parents are super awesome and they came to every game this year, but also um, took on the responsibility of um, taking my dog home. So mm-hmm. that was really awesome. Just one less thing for me to worry about awesome. um, in this new um, era of softball. And I just packed up whatever I could, threw it all in a suitcase and headed to Florida. And so it's been super fun just getting to know my new teammates. And I've played against all of them in college um, Mm -hmm. from my freshman year up until my senior year. I'm really glad that I get to play with Jocelyn Allo for the first time and I don't have to ever compete against her. (laughs) Honestly, same team, no more rivals. (laughs) Exactly. So the Texas OU rivalry is no longer existent. (laughs) You get to join forces together and it's just awesome just getting to know the new coaches and the new personalities, but also it's been awesome. I couldn't be more grateful for a new experience. So amazing. It's been so fun to follow everything that you've been doing so far. So do you have any goals for the rest of your softball career or just life beyond? For softball, I just plan on continuing to use my platform to grow this game. Uh, This league that we're playing in, uh, there's only two teams and what, what is it? about 30, 40 players in it as of now. And so by the time I'm done with my career and I decide to hang up my cleats, I want to make sure that the WVF is better than I found it. It's a bigger game. It's growing. So those little girls that watched me at the World Series have a place to say, I can play professional softball and I don't have to work three jobs Mm -hmm. to continue my dream and to pursue my dream. So that's my goal for the next two to five years. So we'll love see how that goes. I love it. That's so exciting. And speaking of the little girls at the World Series, I saw so many things on social media about girls saying that they were so excited to see you play. And it was just, it was just great to watch. Had to say it one more time. 
So now we will dive into the person behind the athlete and get to know Mary a little bit outside of softball. So you've said that mental health is now become a great importance in your life, especially being an athlete and now just realizing the importance of just really how it makes a person. So tell us a little bit about that journey for you. I had known mental health was real and um, my previous institution really emphasized on taking care of athletes. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was the first time I'd ever been introduced to mental health. And so it was in the back of my head up until the point where I transferred and I was going through that process and it wasn't perfect. It, there was a lot of tears going into it and I just felt, am I making the right decision? I wasn't confident in the decisions because it wasn't a perfect fit in terms right. of I didn't get, I'm not getting um, I came to school to play softball is basically what it was. Right. So is it, do I take a chance on the university that I did and helped build something? Do I go to a power five that's already built that I can just join easily or stay close to home? And those are all decisions that were so hard to make. And I was in a really low place in that sophomore season. Uh, just of not feeling confident in every decision because everything wasn't perfect. You know, Texas is close to my home and I was extremely homesick. And so it was time for me to just finally check in. And my coaches actually had said, Hey, maybe, maybe you can go talk to someone. And in the Polynesian culture, mental health that doesn't exist. Mm. And it was something that I didn't take serious until things just started to keep Uh, rolling into like a negative effect outside of sports. Right. And so I buried it pretty well. Um, I don't think anybody really knew, but I started to go to therapy and talk it out and just figure out my emotions and stabilizing them and just how I can be a better person, better teammate, um, and just feel confident in the decisions I continue to make. Right. And I also think me being open to talking to someone and open to all of those different emotions I was feeling, I educated a lot of my family that it's real and it's okay that it exists Mm -hmm. as long as you're willing to accept, um, just communication at that. Yeah. And yeah. I opened my family's eyes and just, I didn't want them to worry in terms of like, she's not okay. It's, I will be okay as long as I continue to do these things and right. create patterns of just better behavior at that point. Mm-hmm. And so mental health has meant a lot to me. And just, I think it's also having that in the back of my head. I'm able to be a better friend and check in on my teammates and Mm. check in on all the people I love and so it's meant a lot to me and I I'm sad that it takes a lot of college athletes to realize it while they're in college um Mm. because if you're a high school athlete and I think if you're exposed to it pretty early um you're not able you're able to have more more stable emotions and just not as low of lows and as high of highs you know Mm -hmm. it's just figuring out who you are and just um being willing to communicate how you feel in in times that you need it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I, like you said, it's, it's not something that everyone really realizes is a thing until you kind of experience it. So the way that you were light to your family and I bet your teammates as well, I, that was incredible. That's probably incredible. So that's awesome. Well, Mary, thank you so much for being on Mondays with Madison. It was great to see you and catch up. And I'm so excited to just see everything that you do on this team and beyond, and just can't wait to keep following everything that you're doing. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe, and I will see you all next video. Bye.